Going fishing this fall? These are my five baits I think you should be using. We're finally getting into some colder weather and these five baits should help you catch more fish during this fall season. Because as it gets cooler, the fish are gonna get a little lethargic. But as that transition, that fall transition happens, we're gonna be finding lots of bass chasing after balls of shad or forage fish. That is the main thing they're going after. So we're gonna target that bait. Now we want it to be the same size, the same shape, because that's what they're eating almost nonstop. They're trying to put on a little bit of fat before the cold weather hits and they get really slow and lethargic. During that fall transition in the early fall, I wanna keep it simple, stupid, kiss. Keep it simple, stupid, great advice, hurts my feelings every time. Is what it said on the office. Keep it simple. I don't wanna use baits that are gonna be a little more technical, that are gonna be on the bottom. Fish are gonna be feeding somewhere in that upper to middle water column. They're not really looking down to feed during the fall. Bait is gonna stay up in the during the day and fish bass will be offshore at night and then as the water warms during the day they will move up into the shallow water so early morning you want to fish those a little bit deeper water and as it warms up get yourself inside and fish that shallow water when that water starts to cool down bass fishing can get a little bit touchy or a little bit tough to do, to, do, to do. So you have to be real patient, but we're gonna use baits that are gonna be reaction strike baits. We're gonna use moving baits. You're gonna use all sorts, of, there's all sorts in this, in this list. But to start off, we're gonna talk about using a topwater bait because a topwater bait is really key in that early fall, mid fall transition. Bait fish are gonna be in that upper water column. So using that top water knocker that, that just walks is really important. But here's the key to using a top water bait right in the fall. You don't want to be real slow. You want to keep the, that bait moving nonstop. That's the one thing we're, that I'm going to mention numerous times in this video is that it's really important to keep that bait moving because that's what they're looking for. The shad are moving constantly. They're trying to get back into places to hide and those shad are a little bit more open because they're going to be balled up in school so having that bait constantly moving is going to help you catch fish so the first bait is a top water the second one is a jerk bait now using a jerk bait this time of year is going to be a little bit that, that different than when it's really cold when it's really cold you're going to make those couple twitches and then just pause it you're not going to do that right now during that fall and that middle fall, you want to burn that bait back in, rip it in, make that seriously long cast and either twitch it and reel at the same time so you get that erratic action of the jerk bait or just make a super long cast and just reel it in, just burn it in. A jerk bait really is gonna be good because you can keep it in the upper water column and it is the same size as the shad that bass are feeding on. So second bait, is a really good jerk bait. So while I'm here, if you think this content is good and you wanna see more of it, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, please. I try to make these as informative as and as entertaining as possible, and if you're part of the team, it really does help me. Now, one of the questions I get asked when it comes to these videos that I do every month is, what about the line, what about the rod and reel that I should be using? Well, the rod, I think, is all is up to you. I mean, there's certain rods that work better with crankbaits and topwater baits, but I think in terms of the test and the poundage of your line, I think during that early fall, you need to keep it in that 12 to 15 pound. You're not getting a ton of grass, but you're still finding a little grass here and there. That grass is gonna start to die off. If you find that grass, it's really important to mark it and know where it is because that will hold bait during the middle of the day. That's a good place for bass to ambush forage fish or shad because that's really the biggest thing that bass are gonna be eating during the, the early fall transition is shad. They're eating a lot of shad. But as that grass starts to die off, the shad will move too. But if you can find grass, fish it and fish it really hard and, and, and do your thing around it because it holds fish 
pretty much all year round. So my third bait is a lipless crankbait. Now, while I don't yo-yo it in, and that means letting it flutter down and then making a big rod twitch and bouncing it over grass like I think you should do during the summer, I think you can still catch them that way. But a lot of times, it's really good to just make a super long cast because that lipless crankbait goes a mile and keep your rod tip up and just reel it in and get the vibration from that lipless crankbait. Just let it stay in that middle to upper water column and that bat, those bass will target that fish. Now I think every now and then you can let it drop down and you'll get a lot of reaction strikes on the down as it sinks downwards. But having a lipless crankbait and just reeling it in and burning it in is gonna get you a lot, a lot of fish. My fourth is pretty much a no-brainer. The last two are pretty much no-brainers. A crankbait. Now, I wouldn't go with the super deep diving crankbaits. Again, I'm staying in that middle to upper water column. The bass are gonna be feeding upwards. So getting on one of those shallow running crankbaits is going to be very good. Get something small, not the giant ones, something that dives that three to six to eight feet deep, if, especially depending on where you are. If you're way up north, that 10 to 12 foot might be a good place. If you're in the middle of the country, that six to eight might be really good. And if you're down here with all the stuff we have, that one foot to three foot is gonna be crucial to catching lots of fish. A crankbait's a great bait to use all the time during the day, early morning, early afternoon, late evening, that kind of stuff because it's a great search bait this time of year. And if you have a smaller one, it matches the same size of the bait that the bass are eating. So number four is a crankbait and a shallow water run one too. And my last bait is a chatterbait. I think a chatterbait is going to be a chatterbait and topwater bait are the two baits I'm gonna use almost nonstop in the early fall. I want that vibration, I want that action, I want to put a good I want to put a good trailer on that chatterbait. I use that Smash Tech Blade Aid almost nonstop. It's the best one in my opinion there is. And I know there's lots of chatterbaits out there. You can use that Mini Max is really good right now. Of course, the Jackhammer is always amazing. All the the Z-Man chatterbaits are going to work. I want to have that I want to have a chatterbait that doesn't Go to the bottom though. I want a chatterbait that I can keep in that two to four foot water depth. I want to be able to make a long cast with it and just reel it in. As I reel it in, I'm going to give it a couple twitches every now and then so that the blade has a different action or reaction to how I'm twitching my fishing rod. So a chatterbait is really crucial this time of year because it just catches fish all the time. Now I will say, if you're not getting a lot of bites with a chatterbait and you're using a jackhammer, switch to something that's a little less noisy. You might go to the Thunder Cricket or you might go to the Stealth Blade. I know it sounds weird to say noise. You want the noise in the chatterbait. The chat's what makes a chatterbait so good, the action and the thumping. But there are times when that those these bass just see every chatterbait known to man. So use something a little bit different that has a little bit different pitch. That Mini Max is really good. Like I said, that Thunder Cricket has a definitely different sound and, or just use that Stealth Blade. And you'll see that one of those is what they're searching for. A lot of time it's the action that is getting the bites. I find that a lot of times when I make those long distance casts and I'm trying to change either the cadence of my of how I'm reeling in, either the faster or slower. Once I find that cadence that I get one bite on, I try to remember how fast I was fishing that chatterbait and then stick to trying to fish that exact same speed or same water depth. And I think if you do that, you'll catch a lot more fish and chatterbait fishing is just wonderful in my opinion. So in early fall, bass are feeding almost as much as possible. They're feeding a little bit upwards, but hopefully these five baits will help you catch more fish. And tell me which five you're gonna use, because I'd love to know. Early, early fall fishing can be up and down. There'll be days you have great days, and there's gonna be days that are really tough. As that water temperature changes, the fish change also, but you can change with them by either slowing down a little bit, 
maybe using a little different poundage of line or just switching the sound of the bait from a silent even a rattling one you got to be a little bit more adaptive and be able to make changes on the fly as you're fishing in in early fall or during the fall transition because this is this can be the best time of the year to fish it's not so bloody hot that you're bleeding sweat but it's also a good time it's also a time when the fish can get a, when the water gets a little bit cool that they'll get lethargic on you but be patient and go catch them so tell me what five lures you're going to use in the early fall or during the fall transition comment below and tell me what you think again thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button make sure you take kid fishing get your fish on start it early talk to y'all soon cheers